Hi, so today we are going to talk about the muscles that are crossing your elbow, mainly to flex the elbow. Climbing involves a lot of elbow flexion, right? What causes you to do this? We're grabbing the wall and we're doing a lot of pulling motions in this position here. There are 16 muscles that actually cross the elbow joint. Of those 16, I want to highlight six different muscles that are working to flex the elbow joint like this. There's a distinction between primary elbow flexors and secondary elbow flexors. The three primary elbow flexors are the biceps, the brachialis, and the brachioradialis. Well, the biceps, it's attached right at this point here. And it, there's two different muscles and it actually cr connects into the shoulder blade of of your arm. The nice thing about the biceps is that it crosses both the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. So primarily the biceps works on flexing the elbow, but secondarily it also works on being able to lift your arm in this position here. So you're doing exercises to work on strengthening your biceps this way. You can also do exercises with underhand position and going in this position here to get the biceps engaged. Another muscle that's primarily working on elbow flexion is the brachialis. So the brachialis underneath the biceps muscle, you can see where the brachialis is inserts here into the humerus. And this is where the biceps tendon connects, but right here, is where the brachialis is connected to. So note, unlike the biceps muscle, which crosses both your elbow joint and the shoulder joint, the brachialis muscle only crosses the elbow joint. So it's primarily works on elbow flexion. You also have a muscle called your brachioradialis. And that muscle is actually inserts right at the very top here. So you can see this line right here, that's where it originates. But that muscle comes all the way across here and it travels and inserts right into the distal radius here. So that's another muscle that only crosses a single joint, the elbow. Those three muscles, the biceps, the brachioradialis and the brachialis are primary elbow flexors. You notice how with wrist pronation and supination, if the bicep muscle is connected right here, then a lot of times when we are doing this motion here, you can actually see the muscle, if you're in a pronated position, that biceps is lengthened, and the moment you supinate, you can see how that bicep muscle curls. So that plays actually a really important feature in climbing because a lot, most of our climbs, we are not doing undercling motions here where it utilizes the bicep muscle, right? A lot of our climbs where our hands, palms are facing towards the wall, and as we're pulling, we're doing this motion here you're not engaging the biceps as much as you are with the brachialis muscle. This is one reason why when patients come to see me and they're saying they feel a lot of pain around the bicep region, it, I'll test out their muscles and I'll, I'll poke around, actually poke around to see the areas that they feel that tenderness and sensitivity. And it actually comes from the brachialis and not your biceps muscle you will be able to use your biceps to your advantage if your hand is in a supinated position. But the moment you place yourself in a pronated wrist position here, that bicep muscle lengthens and you're not able to use the biceps as efficiently, right? So then the brachialis muscle is going to have to kick in. So as I'm climbing and I'm trying to pull in this way, uh, yeah. we use our biceps a lot when we're doing 
um, under clean motions here. And if a lot of our climbs are primarily under clean roof uh, holds, then your biceps works really well. But the moment you pronate, you're gonna have to use more of the other primary elbow flexors or you will start to kick in using your secondary elbow flexors. So what are the secondary elbow flexors? The secondary elbow flexors are the extensor carpi radialis longus, flexor carpi radialis, as well as the pronator teres. Okay, so where does that fit on this bone model here? Here's where the brachioradialis connects. Just below that is another attachment where the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle is. In a pronated position here, your wrist extends and it uses this muscle that is attached to the second, the base of the second metacarpal. This one right here is the extensor carpi radialis brevis, but on the second metacarpal, the extensor carpi radialis longus connects right here and it inserts all the way to this point right there okay so the extensor carpi radialis longus primary role is to extend the wrist but because it also crosses the elbow joint its secondary role is to work on flexing the elbow all right so here in this position as you extend up you can actually see that muscle flexing as it crosses the elbow joint here. So when you grab any position here, as I pull up, you can actually see that muscle contracting. So that's one of three. Then you have the flexor carpi radialis. The flexor carpi radialis connects to the base of your second and third metacarpals, and it originates all the way to that common flexor tendon, right? So its primary role, once again, is to flex the wrist, but since it also, once it crosses the elbow joint here, then its secondary role is to flex the elbow as well. And lastly, you have your pronator teres. The pronator teres is a muscle that actually inserts so what does a pronated teres do? It pronates, right? So in this position, you can see that the wrist is in a supinated position, but this motion here is pronation. So that muscle right here is the pronated teres and where it inserts into this long little slender portion of the radius and it inserts partly inserts into this region of the um, proximal ulna, but it also inserts into the medial epicondyle. It's a tiny muscle, right? You can see the pronator teres as I fully extend the elbow, fully extend the wrist, and I turn in this way. You can see that muscle slightly popping out there. That muscle once again cuts across, inserts into the radius. But since it also crosses the elbow joint here, it also secondarily works on flexing the wrist. There are a lot of smaller muscles that are controlling your wrist extension and flexion, but those muscles are not just limited to this wrist joint, it actually crosses over to the elbow joint. So although the primary role is to extend the wrist, the secondary role is actually to flex the elbow in. Since there are 16 muscles that do cross your elbow joint, it can get complicated to really figure out what's going on there, right? Why do we end up experiencing pain around those regions? Partly it's because the fact that those muscles are just underdeveloped and they will be flared up when you're climbing a lot of overhung routes uh, because as you're grabbing these overhung routes and you're in this position here, uh, once again, the biceps, you won't be able to pull in with the biceps like this because they are in a less advantageous position here. So as you're climbing these rocks and you're especially in an overhung position, you know, a lot of these muscles are just underdeveloped and they're not used to constantly pulling this 
in this position back and forth here. So you're going to tax a lot of these muscles and an easy way to help reduce the amount of stress of those secondary elbow flexors or even the brachialis muscle is to climb less overhung routes because that's going to put a lot of pressure and stress to your elbow flexors. Um, try working on more straight vertical routes or even slab where you're going to have to place more of the weight into your feet and rather rather than having to just grip so hard with your hands, right? You know, just switch over to practicing your technique and balance as opposed to just pulling, pulling really hard with your hands. Another way to help build those muscles is to do some cross training, right? Bicep curls, right? So with, with uh, placing your hand in a supinated position here, right? These bicep curl motions, you're gonna primarily be using the bicep muscle. However, the moment you start to switch over your hand into even a neutral position or full pronated position, you're gonna get a lot of these other secondary elbow flexors kicking in here. So finding a weight that you can work on with a dumbbell, holding it in more of a pronated position and going back and forth there. Do these curls 10, 15, 20 reps and you'll actually start to discover that before your, your elbow flexion is gonna be fatigued, you're gonna feel a lot more fatigue in your wrist extensors. But once again, those wrist extensors are also crossing the elbow joint. So you're actually killing two birds with one stone here, getting those wrist extensors stronger and at the same time working on elbow flexion too. You can also do that same motion by grabbing a medicine ball or even a kettlebell. And in this pronated position here, as I pull up and down, it's gonna make it even more challenging because not only am I having to focus on bending the elbow, I'm have, having to pinch pretty hard onto the medicine ball in order to prevent it from dropping and makes it even more challenging there. That relates pretty well to any type of motion where you're pinching here and you're pulling in, right? So just getting a couple reps of these, 10 reps, 10, 20 reps of those will really help to build that up. To strengthen your brachioradialis muscle, uh, instead of holding in a supinated position or even in a pronated position like this, the brachioradialis kicks in primarily with neutral position here. So as I'm holding and doing bicep curls, that's gonna accentuate more of the brachioradialis. You see this muscle that pops out the most. And just do wrap out this weight at a heavy weight there. There are also, in the gym you may find um, barbells, this is a 45 pound barbell, or they also have easy curl bars where it's like a, a bicep curl, but it, it's also angled in a way to give you a better grip. So this is another great way to work on building up wrist strength, but also those secondary elbow flexors and I'm doing 10, 20 reps of these. So hopefully that gave you a little more insight into why you may potentially be feeling pain around the elbow. Not only are you have your biceps to be concerned about, you got your brachialis, brachioradialis, and then the secondary elbow flexors, which are flexor carpi radialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and the pronator teres. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please share if you thought this was helpful, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.